of 15 seconds. Hey, can you hear me? I can. I can. I'm like, can she hear me? <laughs> oh, I can now. I could before. Hi, beautiful. How are you? How are you? I'm so good. I wore my bright lipstick for you, my love. <laughs> this is so amazing. I am fangirling right now because I love your page. You are a beast. Oh, you, my God. You are a feminine warrior soon to be a feminine icon i love it oh my goodness that means a lot coming from you thank you so oh, much yeah. you are on fire girl oh my goodness so are you <laughs> yes well you know what yes we are <laughs> seriously like are we not on the way to changing the world yeah um I think it's so, yeah, it's, it's interesting too, because, um, so number one, I'm glad that you're a white woman doing this work because we need, we need more white oh, women. What the hell? <laughs> Jeez, yeah. You're going to make me blush here. Holy cow. <laughs> we need more white women. Um, cause there's so much power in being white. Um, and people like, no matter how credentialed I am, no matter how, like all of, all of my privileges, like no matter how many privileges I have, it's ne it, they're never going to outweigh the privileges and power that come from whiteness, someone being white. Um, so anytime I see a white feminist, I'm like, oh my God, please be like intersectional and like, please be, <laughs> please continue and keep on. <laughs> so I've been, I've been really glad to see your page. That makes me want to cry. Because I know, and that's the saddest thing in the world. I am a sociologist. I have been, I mean, where do I even start? Let's just say I know what's happening. And it makes me so sad. And it's it's like for, for you to say that out loud, it's just, it sucks that we even need to say it, right? Um, so I'm happy to be on your side. I'm, I'm happy to be on the side of people of color. I'm happy to be on the side of LGBTQ. I'm happy to be on the side of women because it is time for us to take our place. So let's, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so listen, there's so much to, to talk about. And by the way, this is a conversation feel free to ask questions. This goes both ways, but I want to bring you out more um, because I have, I have people who follow me, people who love what I say, and I'm like, damn, let's get the conversation going. Let's talk about feminism. And you come out and you talk about feminism, and I'm like, you are lying out the gate, and I love that. Like I said, you are fearless. And you know, and, and when your latest post, I think it's absolutely amazing because you are brilliant, right? You have a ton of degrees. You are accepted as a hobby to Ivy League schools, in your words. Tell us, tell us about this background that you have. Yeah, um, I mean, when I was at Cornell, so I went to Cornell for undergrad and um, I was on, I was also on a scholarship there, but it, it's, um, I didn't think that I was going to 
I was going to be in school for so long. Um, but I studied labor, everything labor in college. And that really got me. That just opened my horizon into this world of oppression and this history of oppression. And once I was exposed to that, it's like, it's like I have been living with one eye open. And when your two eyes are open, like you, you can't, you can't shut it off. Like you can't just say, okay, like I've seen it all. I'm just going to go back to being ignorant and just turning a blind eye. You just kind of have to keep going and keep asking questions. Um, and at, and during my junior to senior year in college, um, of college, I, I decided that I want to I want to move the nexus of power, like where the power is coming from is so it's it's so corrupt and it's so unnecessary. And the and the people who are in power were not the people who I could look up to, right? Like they were going around oppressing a bunch of people for no reasons um, and seemingly taking pleasure um, of, of, you know, uh, out of exploiting people um, and that, you know, that that sort of informs me like you need to study and you need to have the credentials so you can fight these people and you can speak truth to these people um so i you know i narrow down the the causes i mean the 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 primary institutions that drive oppression down to government and religion and those are the two things that i i went to harvard to study um, I got two master's degrees as dual degree student, as a dual degree student, and then um, <laughs> and then I got into Columbia for another master's in journalism. Um, so that as as you know, as a journalist, I want to start exposing. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to I want to start I want to start recording conversations um, with policymakers and presidents and people who are fucking up um, and really draw attention to why things are the way they are. Right. Uh, because there are so many things that are happening that we don't know about um, that need to come to surface. And I know like having been on TikTok, like I know like if people just knew about this, like things would change. Yeah. Um, so that just has been my kind of story in a nutshell. <laughs> I love that. I love that because you already answered a few other questions that I had, which is amazing. So, and, and that was one of the ones, right? It's like, it's like, where do you see yourself taking all this? Like, like, where are you in five years from now? Hmm. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I want to continue engaging in my activism. Um, I see myself like I, cause I have a degree in public administration and I've, I've learned how to analyze policies and craft policies. So I want to go after policymakers. Right, like who who are crafting and implementing these policies, whose impacts trickle down to the people on grounds and are making their lives harder each and every day. Um, so I want to go. I want to. I want to have conversations with those people. I want to hold them accountable. Um, you become a policymaker. Um, yeah, I've 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 thought about it, but. I don't think I'm, I don't think I can do very well as a politician. I don't have the patience, right? Like I don't have the, I don't have the skills to like negotiate and the, and the, you know, like you gotta, you gotta talk to the enemies. And I'm like, ah, do I want it? No, no. (laughs) So the words that went through my head is you're not looking to play nice. (laughs) It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just too, I mean, I think, whenever there is a social movement I get like the the what I what I say to people who want to be allies is lose your patience right right like why why are you so patient yeah right like um and I feel like being if you want to be in politics you kind of have to have that because you know because you know changes are so slow and people move so slow and governments move so slow um so I kind of want to, you know, I kind of want to not do that, like not, not have that in, in my life. Um, but I don't know, we shall, we shall see. So you feel like exposure is the best way to speed things up? Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, so I, I struggle with this because, um, and I actually have not talked about this uh, with anybody. Um, I actually do want to move away from the public shaming aspect of exposure, um, especially considering the, the, um, the kind of intergenerational trauma it causes for people. Um, but I, I struggle to strike the balance between exposing the things that, the, that, that need to be exposed and not engaging in a public shaming so hard, so harsh mm. that, that it becomes about those people, right? Because right. What, what needs to be exposed is systemic and cultural and structural um, oppression that this underlies. Um, so I struggle with that. Um, but yeah. So the thing, you know, because I see what you do, right? Like you, you, I, I follow you, but TikTok knows I love you. So it feeds you to me all the time, right? On my for you page. And, um, and, and I see you calling out, right? People will say something and you call it out. And I do that too. I don't know if you know, but I talk about a no kissing for three months dating rule mm -hmm. and I get guys, right? Cause I, I divide, I divide us into two mindsets, guys and girls, men and women. So selfish short-term thinking, generous long-term thinking is selfish short-term thinking. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's not ready for generous long-term thinking for whatever reason, right? Generous long-term thinking is relationship mode. I want to look after somebody for a long time. I've, I've been a girl, right? Like I got out of a three-year abusive relationship. I was like, I don't want anything. And I was single for a year, but playing, having my fun, right? So I was in girl mode for a full year and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I get guys who don't like that I teach women how to use a no kissing for three months dating rule because guys are looting, they're losing mating opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. Losing the easy hook. They're losing the ability to say, yeah, baby, you're the one. I want a relationship. And getting the women with words when in fact they don't even want to be men. And right. so guys give me some backlash on that and I call it out. And the way that I view this is I give people the words they need, the thoughts they need, the insight they need, the perspective they need to have more critical thinking. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do, do guys, what do guys say? Like, what are, what are, what are some of the, what are the reasons for the backlash? Like, because they are, get, they are frustrated that they can't kiss a girl, for, they can't kiss a girl for three months. Those are games. Three months, no kissing. Those are games. If you withhold affection, that's a game. Withholding your kiss, that's a game. That's what they say. Nobody's going to wait. A high value man won't wait three months for a first kiss. So I say, listen, if you're calling getting to know somebody before getting into a relationship, a game, you're exactly the type of person we don't want to get with. Right. 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 Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, as a, I mean, like, <laughs> am I blowing your mind? <laughs> I mean, it's so tough because yeah. it, it, like, because if you actually look at what we are fighting for, it's authenticity, like yes. decency, like all these qualities that are like really basic and yeah. decent, like that makes you a person. Like it's just, so like when I, when I talk with fellow feminists, it's about dating like it blows my mind like what, what like what we are listing out for men what we want <laughs> like seriously yeah like, this even has to be said right it does though because listen we are living in the patriarchy are we not who is the most promoted dating coach in the u.s who is it who's showing up on tv oh my dogs are gonna play uh, who is showing up on TV? It's Matthew Hussey. Yeah. Who is he? He's a 30, is a mid 30 single guy. 
So, you know, the relationship guru that's promoted by mainstream television and mainstream radio is a 30 something single guy. This is the one who's going to teach you how to get into a long lasting, loving, intimate relationship. You mean the one who isn't in one? Is that it? So our role model is a player. The right. one who, who dated Camila Cabello for a full year and said nothing about her on his social media. Because this is the guy who doesn't tell the other girls who are into him that he's got a girl. Right, right. He's displaying the behaviors that are problematic. But displaying are the behaviors that are problematic. Right. And we are like, no, no, not we, right? right. But, yeah. you know, women are, are they're, they're shuffled over. Look, here's your role model. This is the one you want to listen to. And hey, I will not take away the fact that he is a great confidence coach mm, because yeah. he lifted himself into that. And I've studied this guy, right? right? I know where he came from. I know the voyage that he took. He lifted himself into confidence. He taught guys how to be a pickup artist and then went, Ooh, I can well, he was teaching guys how to pick up women before teaching women how to pick up guys. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Okay. Okay, that makes sense, though. Right. Okay, <laughs> got it. Interesting. Yeah. So you and I are here to introduce critical thought to women. And I get a lot of men who come on my page and say, thank you for your page because you are teaching me how to be a better man. Do you mm. get this at all? Yeah, I do. You do. They give me hope. Yes, they do, don't they? Yeah. There are, and here's the thing, right? So the patriarchy is, is designed to take men down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a chimpanzee organization, yep. right? Yep. And so we, the human being has a 5% less, like our, our, the genetic difference between humans and bonobos and chimpanzees is less than 5%. But the two species of monkeys that we are really close to are very different. Chimpanzees are patriarchal, only the most, the most powerful mate, and they are extremely violent they yep. fight amongst themselves. They will literally tear themselves apart. They will go to war with anybody who dares come close to their territory. Bonobos are matriarchal. Yep. They are peaceful. They are sexually open. Yep. 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 And yep. this is what I say. We have a choice. We can be bonobos or we can be chimpanzees. Yep. But currently, the cultural structure is chimpanzees. And so it is trying very hard to reduce good men. Men come to me at my book signings and go, why can't I find somebody? And I say, because they're being taken up by guys. They're, they're, they're caught up with guys trying to make it work with guys. And you don't operate the same way guys do. You're not peacocking and dazzling saying, don't see what's behind the curtain. Take a look at what I'm presenting and have sex with it. You are saying, I want to get to know you. And as I get to know you, I will, I will show you what's inside because what's inside is deep and intimate and amazing and generous and caring. But I'm not going to flash this all over everybody. I need to see who's worth it. And I go, just wait, just wait. I'm liberating the women from the guys so that you can get your chance and be seen. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really well put. Hmm. I love so that. we're not just working for the women, you and I, we're working for the men. Yeah. Um, yeah, so men, genuine male allies, right? Like men are awesome. Like yeah. there's they're, they're so, like, they're so many like remarkable men. There's like, they're generous, selfless, the problem with TikTok, though, is it doesn't it doesn't seem to be showing. I mean, because those men, like you said, they they are often hidden. They really don't like credit. Like they really don't like taking credit for standing up for women. 
So they are not building their public platform on feminism. So that's why like women and these men are not coming across. They're, they're not crossing paths with each other. But these men exist. I've come across them. These women exist, right? So my, my job, like my, what I want to do with my TikTok, like I've been paying attention to men, right? Like who are in the comments because remarkable good men will use their body, will use their social power to actually advocate for women when they know that they're not going to get any credit for this. Mm -hmm. Right. So I will see men on on one of the one of the you know problematic TikTok that has gone viral, mm -hmm. and I will scroll through the comment section and I'll I'll see guys and who have who have stood up for us, mm -hmm. right. And I will check out their pages and I will like keep tabs on them, you know, for, you know, from, you know, so they, they will show up, they will continue to show. And there are so many men who are consistent in showing up for us in common sections of viral TikTok videos that have gone problematic, that are problematic for women. Mm -hmm. So these guys, they exist. But when, when I click on their pages, they show up as this average people like who who we wouldn't think are feminists because they don't like to brag about that they don't like to flash it and that's not what that's not why they're feminists yeah. right so like I really want to make sure that I point to them like in my platform and say these guys exist mm -hmm. right like not these men who show up on a fucking you know national sorry but can, am I not supposed to say that oh please swear okay sorry <laughs> Have you, have you seen the titles of my books? Like, no more assholes and fix that shit. You go, girl. <laughs> I mean, like, these fucking, like, you know, National Rape Day that is, that is constructed by a troll on the internet. Like, th these men are not showing up, you know, as, you know, and, and shooting a video that says, like, oh, you want to rape women? Like, come through me, bro. Like, they're not showing up as that, right? Like, they're not throwing performance. They have been engaging in the defense and advocacy of women for years, every day in their lives. Mm -hmm. Like they are the ones that like when this whole thing, National Rape Day, National Rape Day, like came to be an issue, they are the ones who are pointing their fingers at them and saying, what have I not done enough that this is happening? Right. They have such a huge, like they are, they are so obsessed with introspection. It's like their habit and these guys exist. Like, and they, they give me, like, they give me so much like, oh, like, oh, like you, can you be more like, can you be more in public? But then they don't want to be in public. So there's a, there's a whole thing, but those men exist. Like Absolutely. women. And my husband is one of them, right? He, yeah. this is not the kind of person who'll call himself a feminist, but I mean, look at his wife, right? <laughs> like, um, and you're so right in that it's in their behaviors rather than in the flashing and the peacock. He comes on video with me. He'll he'll show up on lives every now and then. And if I if I'm extra coercive, he'll make a TikTok. But he puts a mask on, literally, because he doesn't want people to know who he is. It's it's not about being famous. It's not about being seen. But one of the most, and I said this to women, one of the most difficult things you'll ever do is date a single dad who's a good man, because he will elevate the mother of their children, because they, that's who they are, is they elevate women. And listen, I might have a love-hate relationship with you because of what happened in our relationship, but I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to make sure you're okay, because I don't want our children looking at you struggling mm. so he, he he you know again it's behind the scenes it's it's the, he never bragged about it to anybody people didn't know he paid for the house that she lived in because that's not what they do they just do it they don't need to say it they just do it and this is something i teach women about men is they're not saying it they are doing it. If you want to know what they think, if you want to know how they feel, look at their behaviors, look at what they're doing. And this again, falls back on the no kissing for three months dating rule. You won't see them for who they are until you give them time because over time you learn who they are. Yep. Yep. I think that's one advice.
that you know that everyone should like should be so, so I will I mean I will preface all of this like with the fact that I like I admit it that I don't have patience like that's one thing I don't have like it's like one of many things I don't have so I I don't I mean it's so I recently came across a TikTok and she she's a I think she is a I think she is a dating coach also um I forgot her 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 ta uh, her her handle but she was talking about all these red flags and I'm pretty sure she was talking about these red flags in a in a man when you're trying to date a heterosexual man <laughs> and it was stuff like if he says I don't like any labels um, it's a red flag. Mm -hmm. If he says, do you want to hang out at my place? You know, instead of going on a date, it's a red flag, like, and all these red flags. And I'm like, oh my God, like I say every single one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my God, I'm a walking red flag. Like, can, can do I need coaching? Like, do, am I okay? I'm um, here for you, sister. <laughs> like, um and i think all of that you know that you know that is to say i mean i think one i mean as as somebody who is who is not patient you know like with you know with social social changes like cultural changes i think one area that i like totally believe in that that you should have patience and like you should exercise patience is interpersonal relationships yeah um i think systemic changes and structural changes like be mad about it like you demand change like right now like sap but i think when you're dealing with a person you the person comes with complexities and nuances and just it's a fragilities and yeah. vulnerabilities so you kind of have to make space for all of those and if you don't have patience and that relationship isn't just it's just not going to work it's it's not a it's not the same thing as as your relationship with structures and the society um so i think that's that's you know that's kind of that's patience with nuance in a yeah. nutshell I yeah feel. you have to give time for the reveal because there's something that we go through um and it's this is chemically induced right when we first meet somebody and we start getting that excitement. This is the biological body that's designed to procreate, saying there's something about this person. And really, honestly, if it's if it's fast, if this comes on fast, it's just about symmetry, right? Yeah. Attraction literally is just symmetry. It's, it's triangles in the face, the pupils line up, and then the corners of the eyes line up with the tip of the nose, right? And it creates all these, these symmetrical triangles. And it's only a visual indication of the symmetry of the gene code. And Mother Nature wants you to mate with a symmetrical gene code because symmetry creates strength, right? The way, reason why we have a bridge is because of the, the symmetry. If, if a bridge lacks symmetry, the cars can go over it, the bridge will crumble. So we want strength in the gene code because that creates strength in the human body, which means a species that continues to survive. That's all that is. Um, and so we go into a chemical state that I call best behavior syndrome, because you and yeah. me, my love, we're not going to PMS, right? <laughs> like we sleep less and we're not tired. So we're not grumpy, but you know, that that's just, that's just so that we'll procreate with somebody like out of a crowd of all these people, somebody stands out and we go, mm, mm. Let's, let's do that one. Yeah. Um, but the chemical reaction is going to die down. It's like a heroin user. The first few shots are great, but you have to keep increasing the dose to get something from it. And then now you're just baselining on it. So the chemical reaction dies down. That's the human body. It will balance itself again. And, and then we get into who we are. Now we're going to get hangry. Now we're, we're going to PMS and we're going to do a little bit of lashing out every now and then. And, and, our baggage is going to start vomiting up. And so now we see more of the natural selves. So we do need to give time for the reveal to take place for the best behavior syndrome, part of attraction to die down. Who are you really on a bad day? 
Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's really well put. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love my social sciences, you know, sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology. I mix in behaviorism, spirituality, philosophy. I come up with weird shit. I research it and then I go, oh, I think we got something here. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. It's about finding out who they are at the core, like at core, like fundamentally who you are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this this gets us into also the whole nice guys right like the, the 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 nice guys like who are nice guys are mad like at the core they're, which ones wait like, is it is it like the real nice guys or the actual like like the yeah. actual or the the ones who are like i'm a nice guy why aren't you sleeping with me those those yeah. ones yeah they're getting they're getting mad because we're cock blocking yeah the the per, per, the performative nice guys like this is my theory there's like no this is like nobody came up with this like nobody came up with a theory on this but from my from my observations and from my you know experience like from my research i think i think i think nice guys fundamentally are so angry they're so they have so much to prove like they're so deadly afraid of rejection so when you go right so it like inside their inner wounded children mm. and because we have as a society, as a patriarchal society, when we have boys, we abandon them. Like we abandon them at such a young age. And that's not what kids want. Like kids want consequences. Like kids want discipline. Like it's part of love. We don't give it. We don't give that to boys. Like they get a handout for, you know, misbehaving and like being this way. And there's so much pressure for him to perform and get it together. Like, right. It's so you know these wounds they accumulate and th they remain this inner wounded child fundamentally and they show up as one as a full grown adult trying to make connections mm -hmm. and this inner wounded child is not going anywhere if you don't make a connection with this child like that child is going to continue to lash out and be like pay attention to me pay attention to me and so that's why a lot of the wounds that are inflicted, inflicted on women by men, by these childish men, actually feel so much like wounds being done by children because they are. They're actually being done by inner wounded children. These, 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 these men who are going around hurting women, um, I think they, I, like, I really worry about them. Right. I'm, I'm actually concerned. Um, nobody happy shows up that way right. in in the in the world, you know. And I I do think this. I mean, there's there's a lot of things at play here, in my opinion. Right. There's the big boys don't cry, and mm. so and and listen, little boys like boys males are emotional. They are sensitive. Little boys cry more than little girls. Um, you know, they, like the emotion heartwarming, they would die for us. They would die for the baby that they make. Like, seriously, that is some intense emotion right there. And yet we say, no, you don't have feelings and, and boys don't cry. And then they become adults. And then we, as women get into relationships with them and we go, how come you're not crying over me? Yeah. Right. And so they're demonized at every corner, in addition to being raised in households by parents who were abused as children, mm -hmm. who don't know how to parent without anger. And so there's this, this wild ride that they're on. And now we come together as adults. And I was raised by an abusive mom. I know a lot of men that were raised by abusive moms, abusive dads. And here we are coming together going, I don't know how to do this. And so now we're vomiting on each other, exacerbating the pain and anger that was created since childhood. And the cycle needs to stop. And this is where I step in. I'm like, let me show you how, because... I, listen, I, I did the choosing the wrong person. So perpetuating that cycle of pain. And then I got into a relationship with a great person. But what did we do? We vomited on each other and we fought for 10 years. Um, and so 
I, I broke the cycle, right? Meditation and, and taking responsibility for my emotions, taking responsibility for my behaviors, choosing silence until I thought about what I was going to do before I did it, and then choosing my behaviors before I did them, choosing functional behaviors instead of dysfunctional behaviors. And now my husband and I haven't had a fight in five years. And I'm like, here's the key. Here's the magic. Here's how you do it. Let's do this together so that when you make a baby, the few of us that are now making babies, by the way, but when you make that baby, when you are raising a child together, and by the way, you can step into the circle anytime, right? You might have kids already. Let's start being role models now because the kids that are being raised now need to, we are monkeys designed to imitate. They mm. need to look at their parents and go, oh, yeah. that's yeah. how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is how we raise people who are functional with their emotions, functional with their behaviors, and functional in how they choose to treat each other. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, from a, and this, this, this all ties back to patriarchy, right? Like it's this. That wants to diminish the male because when you diminish the male, you diminish the female. When you diminish the female, you diminish the male. Right. And it's just, there's just so much suppression and it's a, there, there's so much restriction and pressure for you to mold into a certain version of yourself yes. like my problem with patriarchy like my problem with white supremacy and patriarchy both evil systems like I, such clever evil systems they mess with your self-worth like it's their biggest like they manipulate your self-worth that's how they get you to obey to the rules that are oppressive so if you do like the logic is if you do this you are gonna be, you have a hope of being good enough, right? right? And when you, do, when you have done that, the reward isn't now you're good enough. It's you have to do something else, right? So it's, it's more obedience. Like the prize for your obedience is more obedience. You, the prize for your compliance is more compliance. So that's why we keep saying, feminists keep saying revolt, revolt, like dissent, dissent, question, question, challenge, challenge, because it's not gonna get you anywhere. Like this, you know, this, 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 this pandemic, I mean, not in pandemic, that this, this crisis of people with such low self-esteem, yeah. such low self-worth, thinking that if you, you know, if you just get that job or like, if you just have that partner, if you, so it's like hinging all your self-worth and your, your emptiness, like your happiness onto something else other than yourself. So where is yourself? Right. right you're losing so it's again like it's abandonment like patriarchy and white supremacy you you really have to abandon yourself mm -hmm. and so we're all of us are showing up as like confused human beings with no like no solid sense of self and that's why we're like continuing to hurt each other right so like a uh, patriarchy <laughs> it just frustrates me so much because it's it's so cunning like it does something to your psyche yeah. Like, sorry. You can never have a sense of self because you're never good enough. Look at the Disney fairy tale, right? Like, like we, we, listen, women are always saying, I want the flowers. I want the love letter because that's effort. And what you do to show up, you taking me to dinner, you going to a job, you saving your money, you wanting to build a life with me, you wanting to build a home with me, that's the bare minimum. You're not good enough until you do all these other things. Text me as soon as I text you. Get me flowers every week. Write me those love letters. You do it weekly, that's not enough. I want it daily. It's never enough. And they're always pushing each other to not be who they are. Like, men don't talk about their feelings and their problems. If they have something that went wrong, if they had a bad day, they go work through it in their mind instead of vomiting onto their partner. But women are being told that men have to talk, talk, talk. 
And so they're like, you're not good enough because you're not talking enough. You're not talking about your feelings. You're not talking about your problems, but we're not appreciating that they're showing that they love us through their behaviors. We're not appreciating that they're working through their problems in their head instead of vomiting on us and taking it out on us. But nothing they do is ever good enough. And that's a sign of patriarchy. The male can never be good enough. And so he's angry towards the female. Yep. So the female is never good enough because he's always angry at me. And the relationship is a constant struggle. And so we're never happy. And what is the core of patriarchy? Capitalism. If we're never happy, we got to go buy our happiness because we got to find it somewhere. Yeah, capitalism is interesting. <laughs> Because it's, it's such a natural byproduct of patriarchy and white supremacy. Right. Like it's, 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 you, it's, because it, it, all of these systems really, like, seriously, like it all has to do with self esteem. If, it, so people who are out there pushing content um, and story, I, I mean, just, just, just content, it's whichever form it takes, and saying, you are enough. Like you are enough. Like that is so important. Yeah. Like, and I, I want people who look at those messages. I don't want them just like scrolling through. I just, I don't want them just saying like, ah, like, yeah, like you're going to tell me that I'm enough. Like, but no, really, yeah. like you're so enough. Like I need you to, I need you to like sit with that and like actually internalize. Like we're not joking because <laughs> this is at the core of if we decided and woke up one day, right? We, if we woke up one day and decided that we are enough, all the systems will fall apart. Like that, 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 that's how it's going to be, but we won't have it because we were not good enough. Right. It's in it, the whole thing, white supremacy, the oppressors, right? Oppression happens because you are not good enough. Like you have to make sure that in a seesaw you win and the other person loses because you're again, hinging your self-worth onto another person or something else, mm -hmm. not on the nexus, not within the nexus of power that resides in you. So it, like seeing somebody not seeing somebody not doing well, right. And in comparison where you are, like you have to dopamine, right? Like there, there's a, there's a, there's an instant gratification. Yeah. thinking that that's self-esteem like the, if we all just like focused on ourselves and really decided that you know what i'm fucking i'm i'm fucking so good enough all of this goes away yeah right like all of this yeah. um well we won't get there like <laughs> oh don't say that no my love no <laughs> we we are getting there we we need to say that right we are getting there that's why I feel, the next wave that's why i feel like right like so so my lens like my the way i look at feminism the way i the reason why i keep saying this is about men this is about men is because it's because if men decided right to have a strike of self-worth and said who I am is good enough. All I have to do is to just show up as who I am. All of this bullshit goes away. Yeah. That's why I'm so hyper focused on like what's going on with men. We gotta pay attention to men. Like we gotta heal men. Like we gotta help help like help heal men. Because yeah. that is the problem. Right? Like, so I don't know. I honestly don't know if you know, if, if the day is going to come where like everyone just wakes up and decides like, oh yeah, I am good enough. Yeah. And guess what? I am fucking good enough. Like, right. Like I don't, I honestly don't know. Like, it's coming. I'm let, let me soothe your soul. Okay. <laughs> it is coming because I've arrived. <laughs> I'm here and I am teaching women to look at their men, men. I'm I, listen. I'm teaching women to say, okay, listen. You're a guy. Goodbye. You don't get this mating opportunity. You need to man up. 
to get the mating opportunity. You're a man, let me tell you, you are good enough. I see you, I recognize you. Thank you, I am grateful for you. You are such a good man. This is the script. When you get in a relationship with a man and he is there and he is supporting you and he is loving you and he is devoted to you and he works and he saves his money and he builds a home where you will raise a functional child together if that is your choice, but at the very least, be functional, loving, supportive, intimate, and devoted to you. Every single day, you make out with him twice a day, minimum five seconds each. And every single day, you say, thank you for everything he does. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're such a good man. That is the dialogue. That is the script. How did you, how did you meet your husband? I was a stripper. Oh, yeah? Is that how you is that how you met him? He was my customer for two and a half years. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Wait, in Canada? Yeah. Oh, by the way, like I like I'm happy to say this on record. Um yeah. I fucking love Canada. Like I, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you were a stripper. No, no, no. I fucking love Canada. Like it, like I love it's just oh like men there give me hope. <laughs> Like Canadian men, like all of all the men that I've dated, Canadian men are the best men ah. that I've dated. Yeah, truly, because they grew up. I think they grew up in a culture where, I mean, their policies are so normal, right? Like Canada, Canadian policies are so much more normal than American policies. They've grown up with so much more human decency and dignity and respect. Um, and they're just very, they're just so much more liberated men. Um, they don't really give a shit um, about mm -hmm. you know, what people think, like what people, what people think of them. Like, so they're, they're so much, they, they have, they have so much freedom about themselves. So good men, like a lot of good men in Canada. So, <laughs> so I'm happy to, like, I'm happy to vouch for Canadian men. That's on adorable. Average. I love that. I think, I think if we're going to make a difference between Canadian men and American men, I would say that maybe it's because American men are raised in a culture that's more fearful. Yeah. There, there's, and, and fear ignites the amygdala. That's your fight or flight. And, and literally, that's a part of your brain that can grow or shrink, depending on what you do. The more, the more fear you're, you're infused with, the bigger that gets. The more you meditate, the smaller that gets. And so perhaps what we are seeing is a symptom of a larger amygdala in American men versus Canadian men, because, you know, we have gun laws that are like, like I know I was never afraid of school shootings. Um, I was never afraid of shootings, period, when I was growing up. I don't want to go to the U.S. and go to a mall because I don't know. Mm. I don't know. So you know, I think, I think we need to reduce fear. And I think when we start reducing fear, we will see changes in behaviors as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think you nailed it in the head. Like I, I totally believe that. Um, I'm sorry, but I cut you off though. Like <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the story, like with the story of you meeting your husband. Oh, it's just, you know, no, he came in, saw the girl on stage. He was like, ooh, something about that one. Uh, so I forgot this story, but he came on alive with me and people were asking about our, our, our origin story. And I thought I did my stage show and then went up to him. He goes, no. He said, you went and sat where the other girls were sitting. He said, I walked past five girls to come get you. And I was like, oh, damn. So for two and a half years, he would come to see me at this club. And, you know, if I was busy with somebody, he never took another girl. It was always about me. Um, and this is part of the reason why I can speak about this no kissing for three months dating rule with, with insight about how it affects your mindset. Because after you commit to a relationship, a lot of people go into an insecurity phase. And that's because you realize how emotionally invested you are. And if this goes south, then this really hurts because there's no insurance on your heart. The way you can get insurance on your home or in your car, like it would suck if my house or car got damaged, but it would be replaced. And you just can't do that with your heart if you get a broken heart. 
you just have to build yourself back up again. Um, and so I was able to look back on her history and able to say to myself, he didn't have to, but he was devoted to me while he wasn't getting what men typically want from women, which is physical affection, kissing mm -hmm. and sex. And by the way, no kissing doesn't mean no affection. Just got to make sure I always say that because here's, here's a symptom of our culture. When I say no kissing for three months, people think intimacy starts at kissing. And so no kissing for three months gives you an opportunity to build genuine intimacy before sexuality. And kissing is a sexual act because it releases phenylethylamine, which is an aphrodisiac. So this is why kissing precedes sex. So they, they, they think intimacy starts at kissing. And so they go, no kissing for three months. Does that mean no touching for three months? I'm like, no, no kissing doesn't mean no affection. You can show affection. It's just that so affection is something that's earned because you made me feel warm and fuzzy. So just got to make sure I put that out there. No kissing doesn't mean no touching. It just means you touch because you want to, not because you're compelled to, because it's the fourth date. And if I don't kiss them, I'm going to lose an opportunity to maybe start a relationship. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, two and a half years coming to see me at a club, always about me. And finally, we started a relationship and we've been together for 15 years. Oh my goodness. And he's, I, I didn't, I don't know if you believe in soulmates, but you know, I used to have the same, when people say, do you believe in soulmates? I gave them the same answer as when people ask, do you believe in life after death? Um, I'll, I'll tell you when I find it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I finally met this person and everything clicked into place, including the voice in my head that said it could be so good. If only you could clear the static, which was the fighting that we were doing. And, and now that we're in that place where all the baggage is unpacked and it's just us and it's just good and it's just intimate. That certainly feels like a soulmate experience. Mm. Aww. <laughs> That's awesome. So do you think you would use a no kissing for three months dating rule? Me personally? I mean, but so I, I say this, I know I get like I have an intellectual aware, like understanding of what you're saying. Cause I'm like, I get you. Like, I understand that. I personally don't think I can. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I don't think I also, I'm not looking for like a long, right. Like it's, I'm just so, I mean, it, it, it also that's, a, that's another thing I, you know, like while, while we're at it, you know, I know, I know we're, you know, we're, I mean, now that we're talking about it, um, my goal with women isn't to sway them to be single or to have a healthy relationship. Like it's to help them realize who they are and like what they want. Yeah. So that's because I say I want to be single. That doesn't mean that this is the model for feminism right? And what independent women look like. No, you can totally be an independent, badass woman who wants a relationship and who is open it's about a relationship. That. Listen, I say a healthy relationship has freedom. Mm. You're free to be yourself and you yeah. give your partner the freedom to be themselves. You choose to be together. You are not coercing each other to be together. You choose to be together every day. There's, I have a prenup. There is nothing keeping me in this relationship. We don't have children together. There is nothing keeping us together except the fact that we like each other. And, and he doesn't tell me what to do. I don't tell him what to do. There is zero control. I don't text him and get pissed off because he didn't answer till four hours later. I text him and get on with my time. So we give each other absolute freedom. And it's, it's amazing. And, you know, again, if you want to play, 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 the criteria is, do I find you sexy? And do I trust you? That's it. Dive in. Like I, I picked up boys, at the bar and brought them home that night and handcuffed them to my futon and had some fun, you know? So if you want to play, then you play, but if you want a relationship, the criteria is longer. 
for the partner I want to live with and buy a house with and wake up beside in the morning. So that's why I say using no kissing for three months dating rules. So you don't fall for the players who are using the words to mask their intent. Mm. Interesting. I love it. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. Oh, I don't know if I can do it though. <laughs> 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 so you said, so this was interesting and this kind of stuck at the back of my head. You said, I don't like labels. Mm. Yeah, I do use that phrase. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I mean, I, so it's, it's interesting for me to talk to a dating coach because I've hurt men. Like the, the, the reason why I am a feminist, when I say it's about men, it's about men this the stereotype of you know women getting hurt by men and she becomes a feminist like doesn't really apply to me that's not my story like i've i've been passive bystanders right like i've never abused or like, assaulted or harassed anybody in my life um, but i've always been a good person nice person right who showed up in romantic relationships with men you know not as a good partner. Like I, like I, I've, I, like I know that about myself. Um, and it's, I don't know. Um, right, like even me, like I have more masculine quality, like traditionally masculine, you know, more tomboy qualities than, than, than feminine qualities. Um, and, I think it, when when I saw that TikTok, like with all these phrases that red flag, red, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, I'm like, oh my God, I say all of them. Like I've said every single one of them, like in in every single one of the relationship. And it's I'm very quick to bounce. Like I'm I don't stick around long, right? And I've it has taken me a while to realize that there's a pattern um, about myself. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know where, you know, I mean, I don't know if, right? Like, I don't know if these are like truly, I mean, I, I guess they are because they say they're red flags, but yeah, I do say stuff like, I don't like labels because I don't, like, I don't like labels. Um, can we just hang out at my place? Cause I'm lazy. Right. Uh, right. Like, uh, uh, what, what, what else was there? Oh, like, um, I'm a private person cause I am right. Like I say all these things and that's just kind of, I've never thought about it in like, a, oh, that's a red flag, like in a person kind of way. Mm -hmm. I've always thought like, that's just who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't know. I, that, that TikTok got me like really thinking. Like, do I need, do I need a coach? Like, do I, like, am I okay? <laughs> Here's, you know, and I think what this highlights, this is a red flag. If you were looking for a relationship, you are not looking for a relationship. Is that correct? Yes. So if, if I'm looking for a relationship and I hear you say that, I know you're signaling that you're not looking for a relationship. Therefore, this is not the avenue that I should be going down. Mm. Right. Mm. So you're uh, fine. <laughs> you're fine. Thanks. You know, when you, if, if you, if you come to a place where you say to yourself, I want a lobster. Mm. I want that person that I'm, I'm just going to, I just, I, I just want that one, right? If you come to that place, and some of us do, and some of us don't. And there's nothing wrong with whatever route you choose. Mm -hmm. But you may come to a day where you say, I want my one. And it might be that there's somebody that came into your life and accepted that you just wanted to hang out at your place and accepted that you didn't want labels, but just liked hanging around with you. And then one day you woke up and you said, I like that you're here. Why don't you stay? Mm. Oh girl, you know, this, I, I'm so like, when I, dating is so, dating's so tricky. Like it it's just have to be. 
it's so I mean and that's why I'm, I think I'm I'm so I'm so you know I'm almost so proud to say that you know to to know to have the self-awareness that I have that it's I don't think my talents are best used in relationships, right. like in romantic relationship, in, in, in a romantic relationship. I think my best talents are meant to be used to fight for social justice and fight for fight for all these things that are that are important to me. Yeah. That's that's like that's where I get my fulfillment. Like I think I'm supposed to be that person. So it's right, like me. and so like this whole you know narrative about why aren't you in a relationship? Like, why are, why are, don't you want to get, you know, don't you want that? Like, I'm like, no, it's just, it's, it's about me as a person. Like, you know, where can I show up the best? And like, where is my, where's my function as a human being best used and best utilized? And I don't think that's in the romantic relationship context, you know? Yeah. Uh, and this is the same conversation people have when they decide to not have kids. Mm, yeah. Because you were choosing something that is outside of a cultural norm. Right. And that's why you get this questioning, right? right? So, but it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to make your own decisions. It's okay to know yourself so well that you're not following the cultural norms, which I almost fell into, by the way because I've, this is my second marriage. So my first marriage, you know, I was 29 and, you know, I had the husband, we just bought the house. I had the corporate job with the pension plan. I just gotten my first brand new off the lot car. And people are like, so when are you having kids? And I was mm -hmm. like, well, let me see. And I tapped my husband on the shoulder and I said, so when are we having kids? And he went, uh, I don't know, but uh, definitely not right now. And maybe not ever. And I went, you mean I get to think about this? Like that's an option. And mm -hmm. he went, yeah, it's an option. And I, I took a year and I asked every single parent I met, what's the worst part? What's the best part? And let me tell you, the worst parts were outweighing the best part. In addition to that, I did a lot of research on how much it would cost to raise a kid. In addition to that, I looked at the variables what if I have a child that wears a diapers for the rest of its life? What if I have a child that has an accident and, and is homebound, bedbound for the rest of its life, needing me to be a mother for the rest of its life? I can't boot it out at 18 and have my independence. Cause I mean, before I got pregnant, I was thinking I want it out at 18. So I took this year and I researched and I asked myself those heavy questions. Do I want to sacrifice? And, and if it takes the ultimate sacrifice, which is being a caregiver for the rest of my life, am yeah. I willing to sacrifice that? Yeah. And the answer was no. Yeah. So I got my tubes tied. And yeah. then and then came the questioning, but you should be a mother. This is your duty as a person. I literally had a person say, you're intelligent. It's your duty to make another intelligent person. Oh, oh my yes. God. That's so problematic. It was, it was a dude too. Oh my God. Oh my but God. That's this so is what happens when you step outside the cultural norm. It's, it's like, what are you doing? So, and this is where you and I come in, right? Let's be counterculture because culture needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like, <sighs> Yeah, and all of this really is to say, like, because I mean, on this side of it, because um, you know, being surrounded by feminists um, who are cheering me, you know, who you know, who are cheering me on, like when I talk about singlehood and like being single, I also wanted to say to women, feminists who want a healthy romantic relationship, who want kids, like there is no shame in that. Like there's no shame in that desire. Like there's no shame, vice versa. Like there's no, it's you, you, you want them, you have them. Like you, like so go to a coach that is fem that is feminist, right? Like it's, so it's, 
as a feminist, I am interested in erasing shame from our culture altogether. So if you want to do something, yeah. do that thing. Yeah. Right. And I don't get to say, oh, but you should have done this. And you also shouldn't, you also don't get to say, oh, but I should be doing this. Right. So like, there's no talk about should, should have, yeah. right. Like just, if you want, if you, if this is what you want, you go and get it. Yeah. And we'll support you. Like that's, that's the culture that I want. Yeah. Um, You'll be happy to learn that <laughs> because like, can you, can you deny that I'm a feminist? No, but I cook all my man's meals. I wash and fold his laundry and put it away in his drawer. I will pick up that piece of paper that he leaves on the coffee table and say nothing about it because I love being of service to him. I love being, love is a verb. Love is what you do. Love is in your behaviors. Love isn't just what you feel and what you say. Love is what you do. And that's how I love him because he loves me in his own way. And his own way is to be of service to me. His love language and many men's love language, by the way, is acts of service. Mm, He's yeah. very much in service to me. Yeah. And I love being of service to him. My okay. first marriage, we paid everything 50-50. We split the chores 50-50. In this one, I look like a housewife because he pays all the bills and I do all the household work. Right. So, but, but I've never been more feminist in my life. So yes, exactly what you're saying. Be you, be you and love being you and don't be constrained by anybody's definition. Yeah. And also like when, when you think about, when you think about shame, right? Like when you think about like, oh, but should I be doing this? Or like, oh, should I be, should I be wanting that? Like it all comes down to what is the big deal? right like what is the big deal like if a boy wants to go and it starts from it's it starts from the childhood like if the boy wants to go and dress up as a barbie doll he goes up and dress up as a barbie doll like what is a big deal right like okay you want kids what is the big deal like you don't want kids what is the big deal so like i think as a culture like we need to be saying there a lot more like why what is a big deal so like that's where the the age old saga comes in with don't take yourself too seriously. That also means don't take other people too seriously either. Right. Right. Like the, if, okay. They want to make certain life decisions. They want to make certain life decisions. Like, are they harming you? No, then leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's like, okay, this, that person, that, that person wants to, wants to, wants to go and do something that that person wants to go and do something. Like, why aren't you supporting that? Yeah. Like, right, this shame and judgment, like, all comes down to it's not a big deal. Agreed. Just let everyone do it. Like, and we should be showing up as supportive individuals, not individuals so obsessed with judging and, you know, sh you know, judging and, like, just trying to, like, find the flaw in somebody else. I just waiting for like something to like go wrong. So you can say, ah, I told you so. Like you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done this. Like, no, like I need your, I need your finger to like point you to you and really like examine how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. Like how you want to show up. What do you want? Like, can you tell me the five flavors of ice cream that, that you really want? Can you tell me the first thought that you had this morning? Like how much attention are you paying to yourself? Probably not a lot because you, if you are going around judging and shaming other people, your, your, your attention is scattered all around other people. Yeah. So I need you to stop abandoning yourself and like realize that when you're shaming somebody, that's you abandoning yourself. So I need you to like redirect and like, actually wait, what? do I want right now? What am I needing right now? Right? Like what, am, like, what am I lacking so much that I am, I am doing this, right? Like, so it's really self-worth. I self teach this. <laughs> I do literally. I say the, the number one most important question you will ever ask yourself is what do I want? Yeah.
stop. I, I, I say detach your emotional roller coaster from other people's rides. And actually, I teach them to use a fuck you mantra. So if you're if you're writing other people's ups and downs, you got to go, wait a second, fuck you. And then and then revert your gaze back to yourself and say, what do I want? And satisfy your needs. Make yourself happy. Stop distracting. Stop using other people's behaviors as the lightning rod for your unhappiness. Turn the focus back on yourself and create your self-happiness because that creates the vibration, the frequency that you will infect others around you with. And this is how we start becoming a happier culture. Yeah. I got a question for you. Who's your favorite feminist? Oh, loaded question. <laughs> it's that. Um, so... So that is my problem. I do not have one. Okay. Yeah. And that is, that is why I'm a feminist because I haven't come across an Asian feminist who looks like me, who knows my history, who knows the history of my people, who knows the struggles of my people, who thinks like me, who speaks like me, who has had to overcome the Asian accent just to assimilate. Like there's, there's not a single feminist who I can look up to and relate, right? So I can give you answers like, yeah, bell hooks, Gloria Steinem, but they're not, ultimately, I do not see myself with them. They do not look like me. They do not think like, they do not know the struggles of my people. So I, I ideally want to see an Asian woman, feminist Asian woman, like who, who I can relate to who I can identify myself with. And maybe I've been in a bubble for so long that I do not know other you know, Asian feminists because I'm pretty sure they're out there. Um, but I haven't come across one um, who I can say that I want to, that, that woman, I relate. I relate, yeah. Who are, who's your favorite? Um. I, I kind of want to say Madonna. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What about her? Oh, because like, she's just like raw, you know, fuck mm. you. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to go through my journey. I'm going to do it my way. I might make some mistakes, but that's the human nature. Um, I might have some regrets, but that's the human nature. But it's just always just being herself. Um, I, I, wish, I wish she hadn't gotten into the plastic surgery, to be honest. Sorry, Madonna, for saying this. I wish she had aged into herself mm -hmm. because I would, I would have loved to have seen her age into herself. She looks, she looks too different now, right? And, and I think it would have been a sign of strength to be able to age into her looks rather than than try to fight that um but growing up like i sang her songs you know and i i love that energy like i'm 48 so i grew up with madonna and i grew up with women who were just belting out their truths and you know i love listen i was a natural born stripper i was six years old when i knew i was going to be a stripper I was six years old when I told my mom, I'm going to be a stripper when I grow up. I knew this. And so having these women around me who were like into their sex and always, there's always been women who've been into their sexuality. And for me, that's what feminism is. It's owning your sexuality, not letting other people own it for you. I own it. I monetize it. I love it. I will show it at will. And I will exploit it myself. You don't exploit me. I exploit me. And let me tell you, like it, it goes on today, right? Because people are like, I have an audiobook now. Fix that shit is now an audiobook. And people are like, is it on Audible? And I go, no, because Audible wants 70%. Mama, don't take no pimps. So, mm -hmm. you know, just I, I love seeing these women who owned their image and owned their choices. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
I love you. I think this is the perfect note to end this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, this was amazing. I love talking with you. I'm watching you. I am watching you. I, I want you to remember me when you're up there. Cause as you keep moving up this ladder, I want us to keep having these conversations. I think this is so important, my love. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll see you on TikTok. Yeah. I mean, do you mind sending me the recorded version, the, 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 the file so I can have oh, it? Well. Thank you. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, I'm going to have to Google drive it because it's going to be big. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye.